Hey guys, it's Mo from Programmer Tube. Today I want to show you how to reverse a string in C, C++, which is a typical interview question. So if you're interested, let's jump right into it. Okay, so people are often asked during interviews to write a reverse string function. So how, what is the best way to write that in C, C++? Uh, today we're going to see how we can use a technique that's very efficient and very accepted during interviews. So let's jump right into the, the question. And then before we start writing the code, I just want to uh, go over my solution. Uh, through some slides here and kind of explain to you the solution. So the first thing we want to see is an example, right? So here's an example input string A, B, C, D and the output string that the interviewer is expecting is that you reverse completely the string from left to right. So it becomes D, C, B, A. Alright, so some of the constraints are, that are given during interviews are you cannot use pre-existing functions that do reverse for you, right? You can't just use a, like a library function that does it for you. You have to write it yourself, implement it. The other constraint or the other thing you need to be aware of, right, is that the interviewer is looking for efficiency. Your solution has to be efficient. It has to be in terms of big O notation. It has to be, in this case, a linear O-N uh, solution. So meaning that you scan the string in a single loop and even though you might have multiple scans but you cannot have nested loops right it just has to be O N. the other constraint the other thing you should be uh, always uh, aware of is never use unnecessary extra memory unless you have to so in this case in this example we can get away without using extra buffers we can just do it in place so let's see how we can do it in place so the first thing we want is we're going to use a, a two pointers approach. The first pointer is going to point at the beginning of the string. You might be given the length of the string in the interview or you might just have to do it yourself. So the second pointer is going to point to the end of the string. So assuming that you're not given the length, you're going to have to figure out the length yourself. You could use a library function if you're allowed to which is a string length function in this case. If you're not allowed to, you can basically just, uh, you know, walk through the string and have a counter and then figure it out yourself. All right, so just to be uh, aware of the correct calculation here, the correct way to do it is to say, my end pointer is going to be the start pointer plus the length of the string minus one. And that's, typically that's the, the, where the end pointer should point. So, okay, moving next to this slide. Now you can see that this is the correct way to calculate p end. p end equals p start plus the length of the string, which is pointed to by p start minus one. Okay, so now the next step will be to actually, we, we're gonna start swapping the characters between the end, the start and end pointer. And if we do a swap immediately, if we just copy what's at the p end into the p start, we're going to lose the what we are pointing to at, in the p start. So instead, the first thing we want to do is we want to copy the a character, which is being pointed to by a p start, into uh, a temp character, right? So that's the third step we do. So we copy a into a temp character. And then next, what we do is now we say, copy from p end to p start so contents of p start equals contents of p end that means the d is going to go over to here while we maintain the a inside the temp variable so now you can see that d is now here it's highlighted here the next step would be to actually copy the temp back into the end pointer so we say contents of p end equals temp and that goes here so now eventually a is going to be here now, as you can see, I'm just trying to uh, visualize the, the steps uh, for you. So here you can see now A is here, D is here. This is the first swap. Cool. So now the next step will be 
we want to increment the the start pointer to move forward remember that the memory is always going from left to right is going to go higher this way and it's going to go lower memory addressing this way so in this case the the string pointer is actually going to go move forward one one ca one character ahead because the pointer size is a character size here so it goes one step ahead what's the next step after this we're going to decrement the end pointer by one character and move it backwards one so that now we have moved start and end now we go through the same code log code logic again which is copy what's inside p start into a temp variable so b is copied and saved in temp okay now the next step would be to say copy from p end to p start contents of p start equals contents of b end that's how you copy the c right from here all the way to here so now at this step c uh, is now pointing to uh, is, is replacing the b that was here before and we haven't replaced the c here still we just replaced one character the next step would be to say contents of p end equals temp meaning that copy what's inside temp into this location so b is going to go here as highlighted in this next slide now b is here and now that we have copied both characters the next step would be to continue the same logic move start forward one step and then the next step would be to move and backwards one step and now we end up with this case where p end is actually now is, is no longer higher than p start meaning that the two pointers have uh, uh, crossed boundaries right at this point we know we can stop because the p end is no longer greater than p start this indicates to us that we no longer need to swap again we're done hey hey so that's success that means we have replaced we have uh, swapped every character in the string and we're done with our code so this is how we do it with two pointers and i hope the slides were clear so now i'm going to translate this into code uh, as a next step okay so i'm going to use visual studio 2015 here uh, which is the free community edition you can use any compiler you want but this is one this one is also free so you can use it as well so click on file new uh, and then hit project and we're going to do a new project make sure you select visual c plus plus and then make sure you select console application 132 console application this doesn't have to be a fancy uh, uh, gui application just a console will do so let's call it reverse ring then hit enter now on this wizard screen click next make sure to unselect sdl and then hit finish so now the wizard is going to create uh, like this application for me which is good i'm going to remove the comment so typically you're given the function prototype or maybe you're not given the function prototype but typically the function is going to be like this it's going to return a char pointer reverse string and it's going to take a also char pointer p string right so this is your function that you need to implement so let me just zoom in maybe a little bit more so that you can see it better okay so before you write any code you should always check with the interviewer first make sure you understand the question then make sure that you try out some examples before you start and then maybe explain the solution before you start writing the code and it's also a good and very good uh, practice to think out loud while you're writing your code all right so the first thing we want to do here is basically the first thing you should always do when you write any new function is to validate the input parameters what if the user passes in some invalid data so in our case here if the input is null then we just return null we cannot actually operate on this input other than that i think we should be fine so the first thing we said we want to do is we want to define a starting pointer equals p string we can use p string itself but i don't want to mess with it because at the end it's going to be the one we want to return so and then the second pointer is going to be p end equals uh, p start 
plus str len of p string type minus one if you remember from the slides so apparently string length is not defined i need to include string dot h which is the string functions in c c plus plus okay so that takes care of that so now we're going to have to do the following we're going to have to do a while loop while p end is greater but b start we're going to do the following we're going to say character tem equals contents of p start right save it into a character and then now we say with contents of p start equals contents of p end now it's just a swab at this point p end equals tem always when you do a swab just a tab is that every uh, element if you highlight like this it should show exactly once on the left once on the right see it's once on the left once on the right that just double checking the correct swab operation okay so now like we said in the on the slides we now increment after we swab we increment the start pointer and decrement the end pointer this should be how we reverse a string without having to use extra buffers or anything just by using two pointers and like i said if you're not allowed to use string length all you have to do is just make p end equals p start and then just increment until you hit the null and then decrement by one and that is like just implementing string length yourself which is not a lot of code now that we're done we can return the original string pointer so this is our function really very small function let's reduce the zoom in a little bit so that it's now hitting on one screen okay so now let's test it out with some input string char string 100 and this equals a b c d so f input is percent s r then print f output is put a new line character in here as well i'm just using pretty much c here i mean c or c plus plus is the same i'm not using any c plus plus specific feature so in here we're gonna call our function reverse string of the original string so we display the input string and then we display the output string and let's hit on the keyboard to compile and run there's two ways to run it right click on the local debugger this green button this will actually uh also compile and run but it will run in debug mode which i don't want to do it now i just want to hit ctrl f5 on my keyboard okay let's run it okay so now let me zoom in As you can see here in input is a b c d output is d c b a okay so all right let's try some other string we can try hello there and five run it zoom in again so input is hello there and then you can see the output is actually reversed this should be it and even if you test with one character it should be fine if you test with two characters it should be fine you can test it with a a b usually it's better to test your code with uh, whenever you do that in the interview as many cases as you can try to think of edge cases and things like that okay so here as you can see input is a b output is ba all right so that concludes our uh, reverse string exercise uh, if you have any questions please leave me a comment if you have any other questions on your mind you want me to try out to explain i'll be happy to do that thanks for watching hey thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video as much as i enjoyed making it please subscribe to my channel for more videos if you have a request for a video, leave me a comment. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And finally, go check out my website, programmertube.com, download the source code, and for more free stuff.